And now it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Mike Vincent. Hello, thank you for watching. Michael Vincent here. And today we're going to be doing something a little different. Um, as you know, over the last couple weeks, I've been taking a look at the player cards for the Lord of the Rings Living Card Game in chronological order, starting with the core set and starting to work through some of the adventure packs and expansions. Uh, today we're going to take a look at the top 10 hero cards in my opinion, of course, uh, for this game. Now, there's a ton of heroes, as you know, if you have bought all the adventure packs and taken all the expansions into account. And so this was a very daunting task to go back, look at all the heroes, and come up with a top 10 list. So as you know, if you watch a lot of the Dice Tower, the Dice Tower is all about top 10 lists, and so I thought it was very appropriate um, to do a top 10 heroes list for this game. Um, this was a tough choice. Um, I'm still feeling a little iffy about some of my picks, particularly when you start to look at the top couple of heroes, but um, I think I've narrowed it down to some of the best heroes in this game for sure. Um, keep in mind, I have taken into consideration some of the cards that combo well with these heroes. Um, and so let's jump in. Uh, I'll do this in two parts. The first video we'll look at number 10 uh, through number 6, and then the last video we'll take a look at number 5 through number 1. So why don't we jump in and let's take a look at who the number 10 slot goes to. And one final note, I would like to mention that I do not yet have the Blood of Gondor or the Morgul Vale expansions, uh, the two adventure packs in the last cycle. So those two heroes in those two packs will not be included in this list. Um, in a year or six months, I'm hoping to come back and revisit the top 10, as I'm sure there'll be lots of great heroes that could potentially bump off some of these top 10. So for now, it has every hero from the core set all the way up, um, including every hero, including the Black Riders expansion. The only two I do not have are the two adventure packs, Blood of Gondor and the Morgul Vale. Okay, so the number 10 hero is... Baragond. Uh, Baragond, he is a Gondor and a warrior. He has a starting threat of 10. He has zero willpower, one attack, but four defense and four hit points. He is a sentinel and his special ability reads lower the cost to play weapon and armor attachments on Baragond by two. Uh, so I think Baragond is a fantastic hero. Obviously he is, I think you can make a pretty strong argument, the best defender in this game. Having a starting defense of four and having four hit points is amazing. And when you consider he's also a sentinel, so he can do blocking for you and he can do blocking for your partner or partners. Um, when you add his ability onto it, it starts to get ridiculous. Lower the cost to play weapon and armor attachments on Baragond by two. So let's take a look at some of these attachments that you might want to attach to Baragond. Okay, so here's some of the attachments I think go very well with Baragond. First, we have the Spear of the Citadel. Normally, this would have a cost of two, but it's free to play on Baragond. Uh, Baragond, attached to a tactics character, restricted, limit one per character, response, after attached character is declared as a defender, deal one damage to the attacking enemy. So of course, if you're using Baragond, you're gonna be blocking with him, you're gonna be defending with him probably almost every round, uh, as you're probably gonna be bringing him along in a lot of your combat heavy quests. So being able to do one damage every time, especially if you've designed uh, a direct damage deck, um, Baragon very well might be finishing off enemies before they even get a chance to attack. So he combos excellently with that card. We have the Gondorian Shield, has a cost of one, uh, which means it would be free to play on Baragon, and reads, attached to a hero, restricted, limit one per hero, attached hero gains plus one defense, plus two defense instead if attached hero has the Gondor trait. Of course, Baragon does have the Gondor trait, so this bumps his defense up to six. So six defense with four hit points, getting crazy. Um, so the Gondor Shield and the Spear of the Citadel are excellent attachments to put on Baragond. And of course, you've probably thought as well that Citadel Plate is an excellent option. Now it does have a cost of four, but Baragond's ability makes this much more affordable with a cost of two. Um, attached to a hero, restricted. Attached hero gets plus four hit points. So it is worth mentioning that all three of these uh, attachments are restricted. So you're gonna have to choose which two you want to attach. But no matter which way you go, uh, and if you really need defense, I think the Gondorian Shield and Citadel Plate just make him an absolute defending machine. So 
In addition, if you wanted to make him even more scary, you could attach the Song of Wisdom, which would give him the lore resource icon, and then you could attach a Burning Brand to him as well. This one is not restricted, and so this will also allow Baragon to cancel shadow effects. So not only with a defense of 6 is he going to be an absolute tank, but if you consider you can get a Burning Brand on him as well, and he's no longer susceptible to shadow effects, um, you've got the best defender in this game, in my opinion. So uh, there's number 10, Baragon. So moving right along to number nine, we have, drum roll, Gimli. Uh, very similar to Baragon, although instead of being a superior defender, here we have a superior attacker. Uh, Gimli is a dwarf, a noble, and a warrior. He has a starting threat of 11, and he has two willpower, two attack, two defense, and five hit points. Now Gimli gets plus one attack for each damage token on him. So there's some tricks and some cards we can play on Gimli to make him an absolute beast when it comes to taking damage and pumping up his attack values. So let's jump in and take a look at a few of those. Okay, so let's start with defense. Uh, we have several ways to boost Gimli's uh, defense and hit points. Uh, clearly there's the boots from Erebor. This attaches to a dwarf. Limit one per character, but attached hero gets plus one hit point. So that brings Gimli up to six hit points. Of course, you could give him Citadel Plate Armor. This would pump him up by four hit points. And he's also susceptible to the Ring Mail. Uh, this can also be attached to a Dwarf or a Hobbit. And attached character gets plus one hit points and plus one defense. So both, all three of these cards are going to boost Gimli's hit points, allowing him to take more damage therefore also allowing him to deal more damage. So let's take a look at some other cards that can then be used to boost his attack. So let's say you've spent some resources, you've put some attachments on Gimli, you've built up his defense, you've built up his hit points, he's taken some damage, and now you can put these cards to use to make his attacking even more brutal. So the Dwarven Axe is attached to a hero, restricted. Attached hero gains plus one attack, plus two attack, instead of attached hero as a dwarf. So if Gimli has already taken six, seven hit points of damage, um, you then have this on top of him, allowing him just to have a ridiculous attack. Then you could play Kazad Kazad with a cast of with a cost of zero. Choose a dwarf character until the end of the phase. That character gets plus three attack. So now we're probably looking at somewhere over ten attack. And you could then play a heavy stroke. Uh, after a dwarf deals X damage to an enemy during combat, deal an additional X damage to that enemy once per phase. So you're starting to see that Gimli has the potential to one hit almost every enemy in this game. Um, just superior attacking ability, and like Baragond, um, almost the counterpoint. Uh, where Baragon is defense, Gimli is attacking. So that's why I think he deserves to be in the top 10. Okay, so here we are taking a look at number 8. We have... Mary from the Tactic Sphere. Now, I'm sure I'm not the only one who, when I first heard the Black Riders expansion was coming out and it was to feature Hobbits, uh, I know for a fact that many people were not very excited about this. Um, having so many cool heroes um, from the Heirs of Numenor expansion, we have lots of Gondorian ones, lots of Dwarven ones, some classic heroes uh, from the movies and books, and so to hear there's going to be Hobbits coming out, okay. But when people saw the Hobbits, uh, and particularly Mary, I think, they were very pleasantly surprised. So let's take a closer look. Um, Mary is a Hobbit, of course, and he has a very low starting threat at six. And this is why, um, this is a big factor as to why I think Mary belongs in this list. There's a lot of good attackers in this game, but they usually have a higher threat cost. So for a threat of six, Mary has the potential to do quite a bit of damage and be a very strong attacking hero. He has two willpower, zero attack, one defense and two hit points, but it says Mary gets plus one attack for each Hobbit hero you control. So chances are if you're playing Mary, you're likely going to be playing him in a Hobbit deck. So he's probably going to have a base attack of three. Response, after Mary participates in an attack that destroys an enemy, ready another character that participated in that attack. So this allows you to free up another character to potentially do another attack and do even more damage. Now on his own, he's okay. But I think we need to take a look at some cards that combo very well with Mary. So I think many people agree that the Dagger of Westerness was certainly one of the best cards from the Black Riders expansion. It has only a cost of one, uh, and it reads attached to a hero, restricted. 
Attached hero gets plus one attack, plus two instead of attacking enemy with an engagement cost higher than your threat. So the whole um, mechanic of the hobbits is often to be engaging enemies with a higher engagement cost. So assuming you're doing this, um, the dagger westerness is not unique. So it's possible to get two copies of this on Mary. And if you're playing with three hobbits, well, he's going to then have an attack of three, plus two, plus two, three, four, five, six, seven attack, which is superior. You can then use Unseen Strike, uh, choose a character you control. To the end of the phase, that character gets plus three attack while attacking an enemy with a higher engagement cost than your threat. So now you have Mary with seven attack, plus three, ten attack. So that is very superior for a hero with only six starting threat. Um, and when you combo him with Samwise Gamgee and some of the other hobbits, um, he becomes very powerful. Keep in mind, if you attach uh, a fast hitch to him for only a cost of one, exhaust fast hitch to ready attached character. So you can be readying Mary twice a turn, um, and with his superior attack, as long as you're engaged with enemies with a higher threat, then you're going to be in very good shape. So I never expected, perhaps, that Mary would be on this top 10 list when I first heard about it, but I think he's very deserving of a spot on the top 10. <laughs> Moving on to number 7. We have Eowyn. So Eowyn is from the core set, but she is still one of the best heroes in my opinion. Um, there's two major focuses I think of this game. The first is combat, the second is questing. And really no single hero quests more uh, effectively than Eowyn. She has a starting threat of 9, which is pretty reasonable, and she has 4 willpower, 1 attack, 1 defense, and 3 hit points. Uh, her ability reads, discard one card from your hand to give A1 plus one willpower until the end of the phase. This effect may be triggered by each player once each round. So the more players you're playing with, the more you can potentially benefit from this. So this means if you're playing with two players, you can have six willpower questing with her or potentially um, seven or eight if you're playing with three or four characters. Now keep in mind, there's another card we can add to her and that is Favor of the Lady. And this will boost her by plus one. Um, the favor of the lady is not unique, so it's potential uh, possible to play more than one of these on her, just giving her that much better questing ability. Um, so I think just being that she's a single hero, her threat is pretty reasonable. And when you consider her ability, the um, potential to boost her willpower above and beyond four, and that all players uh, can discard a card as well, she remains one of the best questers in this game, um, and I think deserves a spot in the top ten. So there we have her. Okay, getting close to halfway, looking at number six. And the number six spot goes to... Legolas. Now, when I first started conceiving how this list would, would fall out, uh, my original thought was that Legolas would probably end up being in the top three, certainly in the top five. Um, but it's interesting, when I started looking at all the heroes and all their abilities and some of the cards that comboed with them, unfortunately, I found it was hard to justify putting Legolas in the top five. That being said, I think Legolas is one of the best heroes in this game. I think I have played with him more than any other hero, and his ability to attack and make progress is so invaluable. Um, so Legolas has a starting threat of 9. He has 1 willpower, 3 attack, 1 defense, and 4 hit points. He's ranged and reads response after Legolas participates in an attack that destroys an enemy, plays 2 progress tokens on the current quest. So if you have Legolas, of course you're going to be trying to boost his attack and you're going to want to attack with him as much as possible, be killing enemies and therefore making extra progress on top of the questing that you've already done. Um, one of the reasons I think Legolas belongs in the top 10, his base attack of 3 is okay, but there's a lot of cards that combo very well with him in his printed uh, keyword ranged. So let's look at some of the cards that work very well with Legolas. So here are four cards that I think combo very well with Legolas to complement his abilities. The first is the Blade of Gondolin. Uh, this basically get, just enhances the ability he already has. So it reads attached to a hero. Attached hero gets plus one attack when attacking an orc, which is great if you do happen to be attacking orcs. There's certainly lots of them in this game. But it also reads response after attached hero attacks and destroys an enemy, place one progress token on the current quest. So this allows Legolas to boost his attack uh, sorry, his ability to place three progress um, as opposed to two. So it just makes his ability that much more keen. Uh, we also see the black arrow. Now this is unique, you can only have one of them, but it reads limit one per deck, attached to a hero with the keyword ranged, response. 
After attached hero declares an attack, add black arrow to the victory display to give attached hero plus five for this attack. So of course the black arrow is going to boost um, Legolas's attack from three to eight, and you may very well have other um, boosts of, on him as well. So black arrow giving plus five attack is fantastic, and it's very nice that it's free to play. Now we have the Rivendell blade, and because uh, Legolas is a Sylvan, we can play the Rivendell Blade on him. So Rivendell Blade, only a cost of one, reads attached to a Noldor or Sylvan character, restricted. When attached character attacks an enemy, that enemy gets minus two defense to the end of the phase. So the ability to lower defense, and especially when we consider the Rivendell Blade is not unique. So it's possible to put two copies of the Rivendell Blade on Legolas, therefore being able to lower enemy's defense by four. So in a lot of the most recent expansions and adventure packs, we've noticed that enemies are starting to get very high defense. So if you can bring out Legolas, you can throw a couple of Rivendell Blades on him, and the ability to lower th their defense by four just makes it that much easier for him to kill them, and then make some extra progress. And finally, Hands Upon the Bow, featuring Legolas on the card in the art, uh, reads, Action, exhaust a character you control with ranged to immediately declare it as an attacker and resolve its attack against an enemy in the staging area. It gets plus one during this attack. So again, a great card allows Legolas to fire into the staging area. Um, if you have the Rivendell Blades attached, then they're going to have less defense. He's going to get his plus one attack, and chances are you're going to be killing some enemies and uh, making progress. So I think all of these cards combo very well with Legolas, and I feel very comfortable putting him in the top ten. Uh, perhaps if I think about it some more, maybe I should have put him higher on the list. But I think I'm a little biased because I do love his card and I've played with him so much. So, Legolas. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. <laughs>